Bandwidth for this podcast is brought to you by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Welcome back to MacBreak Studio. Here we are downtown Petaluma at the Pixel Core Studios. And we have Mark Spencer. He's going to show us more motion stuff, animation, and... More motion yeah. stuff. More yeah. motion stuff. Yeah. So um, we talked uh, maybe a few episodes ago about uh, keyframing in motion, just the basic process of how to record keyframes on parameters and manipulate those keyframes. Right. You, you animated a basketball, basketball on a court, yeah. right? Yeah, and, and I actually want to start with something similar. Here I have a, a, a bouncing soccer ball on this court. And you might say, why do you have a soccer ball bouncing on a basketball court? On a basketball court. So here, here's the reason. Um, Frequently, when you're building stuff for a client, you don't have the finished artwork. Right. Right. They're they're producing a logo. They're producing something, or they're trying to decide what artwork to buy. So, in this case, I know I need to animate a ball on a bat. It's going to be a basketball, but the client hasn't chosen what basketball they want. So I just grabbed something I had, which happened to be the soccer ball. This is another iStock photo image that I happen to have from another project. So I built my animation with basically a placeholder graphic. Okay. In this case, a soccer ball. A soccer ball, right. And now the, the client has come and given me the basketball, and now I want the basketball to be doing what the soccer ball is doing. Exactly. So I want to get those keyframes off of the soccer ball and onto the basketball. Okay. So you may think, oh, I can copy paste. Would you might be thinking that? I, I might, or I would think, gosh, it'd be a really way to just just swap out the items and okay, have well, the keys. We'll get there in a minute. Let's get there in a minute. Oh, sorry. So let's let's say you want to copy paste. Okay. Let's just say. <laughs> let's uh, just roll say, with me. Roll all right. With me. Okay. okay. You want to? I really want to copy paste yeah, keyframes. So and I, and I would say you can. Okay. And that's good. great. So let's just say let's let's bring in this basketball right. uh, into the same group. It doesn't matter. But let's say you know you bring it all to the project, right, okay. and now I'll select the soccer ball, and I have the keyframe editor opened down here. And I'm just going to drag a marquee to select all these keyframes. Command C to copy. I just Command C or edit copy. I'll select the basketball and I'll hit Command V to paste. Uh, and if I play that, they should be in the exact same. Yeah, it's doing the exact same nice. thing. The ball, the soccer ball, was bigger to begin with, so they're slightly different size, but they're doing exactly the same thing. So if I turn the soccer ball off. I've accomplished my task. You sure did. Okay, great. Store, uh, episode over. Episode. So, thank you for watching <laughs> MacBook Studio. Yeah. So, but here, let me. Let me I'm going to undo that, uh, and I'm going to get rid of that basketball because I, I just want to show you a a faster way. So, um, here, here's our bouncing soccer ball, and really, to me, this is this is a super useful technique it, many times, and it applies not just to a keyframed object. But any temporary object or object that you want to swap out, and you may have applied masks, you may have applied behaviors, you may have applied filters right. to it. It doesn't matter. So what we're going to do is is what you uh, just gave away. Um, I stole your thunder. <laughs> <a little bit>. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> um, which is called uh, ex exchanging the media. Right. And but all you do, I mean, very very simple. Uh, and I'll, I'll zoom in a little bit to see if we can do this, uh, so you can really see it. I'm going to drag the basketball on top of the soccer ball, and I get a hooked arrow. Okay. Got arrow, to see the hook. Kind of disappeared quickly. There, hooked there arrow. Go. I'm going to let go of the mouse, and it swaps out the media, but maintains any transformations we've done to masks, it. keyframes, any effects, effects, anything that's yeah. on it. it Filters, just, behaviors, just like it masks. inherits it. Yeah, it just gets it all. Yeah. So that's by far the fastest way. If you don't want to get rid, I'm going to undo that again. If you don't want to get rid of that soccer ball, so I just did un Command Z to undo, Command D to duplicate it first, and then swap out, right? And now we've got both. So it's just it's faster, and um, when you copy paste keyframes, you might not select them all. Right. You might not have made sure that you had all your animated parameters showing, right. so you might miss something. That makes sense. What is good about copy pasting keyframes? If you only wanted to copy over, let's say you only wanted to copy over the position, um, but you didn't want anything else to happen. So uh, let me let me delete that guy and bring the basketball in. So right now the basketball uh, is not moving at all. Uh, basketball just sitting there, but now I only have the position properties of the soccer ball, nothing else. Right. And sometimes you do you don't want every single thing. In that case, I would I might want to copy paste. I could copy paste onto the basketball, and now the basketball is moving uh, with the other one. I've got the I've started a little bit later, so it's starting not quite at the same time. I have to right. kind of shift it back in time, but um, it's not rotating, it's not scaling. It's just it's position. On, it's just position. Because, yeah, right. yeah. But there's even another way. 
okay? Because the whole thing about motion, it's not like Final Cut, there's like three ways to do everything. Right. So um, in some ways, this is my favorite way to deal with this. Exchanging media is great when you want to inherit all the properties. Sure. But let's bring this basketball in again. And if I do only want to uh, transfer some of the properties, I can be selective without needing to select them. I don't need to open the uh, keyframe editor. I don't need to isolate keyframes and select them. What I'm going to do is go to the inspector. And just it's clear, if I play now, the soccer ball is animated and the basketball is not, right? Right. So I'm going to select that soccer ball. And in the inspector, in the properties pane here, um, we can see the animated parameter. In fact, it's very obvious. They're they're red. Okay, if motion tells you anything that's red um, got, is animated. animated. I'm tapping yeah. the arrow keys to move through. When I land on a keyframe, the keyframes turn orange. There. Right. So here is a really cool thing. Any property, and this doesn't just apply to animated properties. Any parameter that I want to apply to the basketball, I can apply by dragging the name of it. So if I want the position of the soccer applied to the bas of the soccer ball applied to the basketball, I can just drag it on there. And now the basketball is moving like the soccer ball. If I want to rotate it, I can drag rotation onto the basketball. Oh, that's great. Or scale, I can drag scale onto it. Okay, or I'm going to undo three times so that's all you know, gone again. If I want all of them, yes. check, I love this. You can just take this word transform, and I want all these transform properties applied to the basketball. I'll just drag them all in there at once. Oh, that's fantastic! Super, super useful. Not super documented easy. anywhere either, by the way. I wish that had. Um, I wish that existed in Final Cut. Yeah, would that be handy? That would, that would, that would be fantastic. Apple, are you listening? This is something I use all the time mm. to be able to transfer. Mm. And the cool thing about this is that exchange media idea. Let me turn the soccer ball off for a minute. Works great when you have you know one graphic to another. But let's say you have some text. So I'm going to hit the T uh, T for the text tool, and just type some text on the screen here. Let me make it a little bigger. Heads up display, hmm. bounce. Okay. Bounce. Now, in this case, text isn't going to exist in your in your file browser. It's not, so you can't do an exchange media right. thing. But you can do. Let's just play to see what's going on here. So the ball's bouncing. The text is not right. Mm -hmm. um, but let's move the playhead back home. And what I'll do is select the basketball, and inspector. in the ins in the inspector in the properties pane, I don't want the text to rotate. Right. right, that would be kind of silly. Yeah. Uh, but I might. I want it to position. I'm on a command click on scale. I've got both of those, so I'll drag yeah. those onto the text. Well, look at that. And now the text bounces right on with the basketball. That's sweet. So, super super easy thing, right? Yeah. And just to finish this off, um, I might want the bounce path to be separate from the ball. Right, okay. so the text path will be slightly offset or whatever. Yeah, I don't want it right in front like that. Okay. I'd like it over to the right. And we talked in a previous em episode here, you can hold down, the, hold down the option and command keys and drag on the path mm -hmm. um, to move one of the others. So I can move that over like that. But another way to do this, it sometimes can be a little more useful in, in my mind, is I'm going to take that basketball and put it in its own group. So from the object menu, I'm going to choose to, to group it. Okay, I'm not choosing new group. I'm choosing the verb group. I right. want to put it in a group. And that way, I can move the group, okay? And just really, I don't have to worry about holding down Option Command and clicking right on that keyframe. Right. It's just a little, a little slicker. And now, um, the word bounces right with the basketball. So in cases where you don't, you're not exchanging media because there's no media to exchange. You know, it's a, it's a built-in motion object like an emitter or a replicator right. or text. Uh, dragging the name of the parameter that you want. Uh, onto the target object is a great way to match something. In fact, that's a cute little animation that you created there. Well, thank you very I, much. I like it very much. So, there you go. I mean, this is uh, animation 101. Actually, this would be 102 if, uh, for our previous episode. But uh, if you want to learn more about how to animate with keyframes, behaviors, and particle emitters, and uh, replicators, Mark has an awesome training at rippletraining.com you should check out. and. Uh, can't wait to to see the next episode. I'm looking forward to it. Excellent. All right, Steve, so thank thanks. you for another watching another episode of MacBreak Studio. Catch you next time.